So joined uh, to my left to our managing director of the national team, Lindsay Mantenko. Next to her, the head coach of the women's Olympic team. And at the end of the table, Dave Durden, the men's Olympic head coach. Um, as you may have seen this evening during the awards ceremony, the team announced eight assistant coaches. We will obviously all also have the open water head coach, Catherine Case, joining the team that have 11 coaches total and a total of 53 athletes going to Tokyo for Team USA, three open water athletes and the 50 pool athletes who competed here this week. Um, and so with that, I will open it up to questions. Just raise a hand, we'll get you the mic and to whomever you want to direct it to. Hi, Greg, I just had this question for Simone and she said you would be a serial planner because um, I asked how her training is going to be different than it would have been with uh, her dealing with the overtraining syndrome. So what do you see for her um, for the next weeks until you're at training camp? We're just going to continue to take it uh, day by day, really. Um, you know, much like everything in the last 18 months, you have a plan and then you adjust the plan and then that plan gets adjusted. Um, so we'll, we'll have, I, I have a plan uh, already in place, but we'll just kind of take it day by day and, and make some adjustments. But, you know, <laughs> it, I think tonight was so representative of Simone's competitive spirit. I, she could have not had a coach for the last year and still done what she did tonight because in that moment, um, she is just so tough. Uh, her mental toughness and her competitive spirit is what makes her truly great. And um, that was amazing to see uh, that she just kind of willed herself to that. And so, um, you know, we're just going to take it day by day and make sure that we're still uh, focusing on her health um, and at the same time trying to maximize performance. Hi. Uh, to all three of you, if you wouldn't mind, uh, we were so much conversation about the pandemic and how it was going to affect people. And you know, there are teenagers who would not have made it last year. And of course, there are many older swimmers who made it this year, whether it had to do with age or just an opportunity to come back to the sport as some of them did. I'm curious if you could just, now that you've had a full eight days or so to go through this, your assessments, maybe Lindsay, starting with you, of, of how the pandemic affected this team. And maybe there is no trend, maybe it's just individual stories, but um, because this is such a big story, of course, the, the missing year, uh, how did it impact this team that you now have going to Tokyo? Thank you. Sure, I think I, I think these guys can. You know, they were in the, the daily grind of of dealing with their athletes um, more than I was this, this past year. But uh, I think it definitely affected the, the team. But it was interesting. We were trying to figure out stats, and everybody's like, "Oh, it's such a young team. It's such a rookie team." And and um, there's a lot of rookies on the team, but there's only four more rookies than there was in 2016. We had 31 rookies on our team in 2016, um, and we have 35 with the open water team this year. So it's it's, it's not, it's young. Yes. Um, but it's, it's the team that, that we had got the opportunity to pick this, this week. And we're lucky that we're here. <laughs> we're lucky that we get to do this. And, um, I'm so proud. Of, I'm so proud of this team. I'm, I'm so humbled to be sitting up here with these guys. We've, we've been through a lot this past, these past 18 months. We've, this guy's been, been by my side since like, I don't know, November of 18 or something. And so, um, we're, we're going to have a great, we have a great plan going into Tokyo. We're really looking forward to it. And, um, Really excited to work with a lot of new people that we haven't had the opportunity to work with before. That was a great answer. Um, also, I did want to wish all the dads out there happy Father's Day. Um, it, you know, I, I think our focus as as coaches and as uh, Team USA is really on on what's in front of us. Um, of course, you know, you could could look back and and try and project how the team would have would have looked differently a year ago. But the reality is. Um, this is the the group. The, these are the athletes that uh, that came here and and got through this meat grinder of a of a competition. Um, and it's what separates Team USA from the rest of the world is the difficulty of making this team. And we couldn't be more excited about the the athletes that are on Team USA. They've proven themselves this week. Looking forward to getting out to training camp and starting to build some momentum so we can be uh, even better uh, in Tokyo. Yeah, I think. <clears throat> I think for me, it's, it's just exciting to have a high level, a high level meet where we have the best in our country racing each other. Um, let me get that a little bit at our NC2A competitions in March, but I think as coaches, we look for those points and times to really make effective changes in what we're doing training plan wise, race strategy wise, uh, changing up, um, 
you know, how we're coaching our athletes. And so the beauty about that now is we have eight days of information on that. We've waited a long time to get that information, but we have eight days of information and it helps us do our job better. And I would, I would probably guess that every coach would tell you that. It's like, thank goodness that we actually have some information now that we can go forward and make our athletes better. We have a, we have a data point now. So uh, that's, that's what I'm excited about because I, I, I now know like, okay, I, I, this is what I need to tweak a little bit for Murph. This is what I need to tweak for Sully. This, I mean, so it's, I get excited about the next eight weeks and, and, how, and how it's going to help me be a better coach. All right, for all three of you, we've had more emotion amongst competitors, uh, jumping lane lines to celebrate and to give condolences, uh, you know, starting with, you know, Chase and Jay putting their arm around Foster and the 800 free when they all, you know, went down to a, a new, a stunned 15 year old. And today with, you know, Abby jumping, leaping over the lane line for Simone um, as coaches of Team USA, like, what does that mean to you to see that bond amongst competitors grow and how much does that help, you know, the team develop? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, it's, I think if you ask a national team alumni, uh, their experiences uh, over the years competing for Team USA, it's, it's not about the times, it's about the experiences. And these people love and care about each other. And uh, when you get out to that camp setting, um, spending that quality time together, getting to know the the, the new folks, um, re-engaging with with people that they haven't seen. And the other the part is, you know, some of them are really close and they haven't seen each other in such a long time. And so they're just they're ecstatic just to be able to do that, knowing that that's coming right for uh, for Abby and Simone in that 50. That was a really cool moment. Uh, schools are what, you know, 30 miles apart, but they never see each other because of some of the restrictions through this year. And, and there's that bond it's, you know, they had their, their, their Stanford and, and Cal uh, rivalry over the years, but it, it, as soon as they finished on that 50, they're, they're on team USA. Now, now we're ready to go compete uh, against the rest of the world. And I, I think you see that uh, throughout the, the course of the meet. And it's just, it is a genuine love and care for their teammates um, and the, the consoling of those, uh, that, that aren't moving on because they really care about them. And so it's uh, a meat full of emotions, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. It's, it's been an emotional 14 months. And, and I think that carries over to this, to this competition over these eight days. It's, um, you know, no one has had it perfect and it's, it's just the kind of the the relief of doing what you have now worked five years to do. And over the last 14 months in some tough circumstances and just that alone, just as a, you know, kind of an outpouring of, I mean, I'm, I'm tired, <laughs> you know? So, and I didn't, I didn't swim. So I, 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 I can just only imagine, you know, what, um, what these swimmers are, are experiencing as they touch the wall. Thanks for both coaches. Uh, in 2016, there was a lot of discussion of, of the amount of team building that you did between trials and Rio and how well it worked. You're doing it now with, with a very different group, uh, and you're doing it, as Dave alluded to, off of a fresh set of data points that you've been waiting to get. Like, Is it going to be a more, I guess, compressed or active uh, team bonding building process now in the next several weeks uh, than it was last five years ago. Okay. <laughs> I go first. Uh, um, forgot the question. Um, our, <laughs> our, 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 uh, our team building piece of it. Um, you know, I, and I, I wish I had a good, answer for you, Pat, on that. But it, it's uh, part of it is just really thinking about the personalities, taking a couple days to do that. I mean, I, um, uh, I, I fly out a little later tomorrow on purpose just to, you know, sit with, you know, there's a, there's a, a whiteboard in a hotel room in a conference room that has all these names of these athletes up on it. And it's just sitting with that for a second and understanding the, you know, where these guys are coming from, where they are, uh, around the country, where they are in in, in school or, or out of school, professionally, et cetera, and just 
uh, honestly, using the experience of the coaching staff that we have uh, to, to to gel this uh, to gel this thing together, and and not it's not one one person's solution to this. It's a coaching staff solution to this, and and um, and I think we have the we definitely have the right staff uh, on our side to help with that, and and that's that's probably our our first piece is to is to lean into to our our staff and 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 really come up with a with the blueprint that's going to help our uh help our team gel and generate some performance in Tokyo. Yeah, and um I think there'll be definitely some planned activities again, right? I, I think there's uh there's little things to do on a daily basis. There's some some bigger uh things that I that I have in mind. Um but that uh that camaraderie as you go through a, a, a two week camp when it's great that we're going to be in one location for two weeks. And, and so that time in Hawaii uh, is really valuable. Uh, the, the first part of that is, is spending time getting to, to really maybe know some people a little bit better that they don't know well yet. Um, but then in the water, uh, it, it's not, you know, 50 different individual plants. Uh, it, it's different groups uh, getting people training together that they don't necessarily uh, get to train with very often, create some competitive uh, environments and practice. And that just continues to, to build and build as we get closer and closer to uh, departure to Tokyo. Um, and so it's, you know, some of it you can kind of put your finger on and some of it just, it's the magic that happens at camp that you can't really explain. Lindsay knows that better than, than Dave and I, for sure. She's been on Olympic teams uh, as an athlete. And so it's, it's uh, a pretty amazing experience. Dave, what have you seen from Tom Shields the last couple of uh, years, particularly in terms of his journey with mental health and whatnot? I don't know why Greg was laughing at that. <laughs> well, I, you know, I saw a 17 year old Tom. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I coached Tom. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think just a, a, an, an openness to, um, to be able to communicate honestly where he is uh, in, in a day to day setting. We had just a really awesome conversation, uh, for about an hour out there, uh, outside the warm up pool, uh, the day before the hundred fly prelims and, and Tom, as, um, as he has spent this past year over this past year, uh, um, you know, working in therapy, uh, you just you understand how much he cares about how others perceive him, and um, it's. I mean, he is he is he is awesome, and, and I I think it, it took a a long time to to get to that, but he's also been fantastic with the guys on our team, uh, being open with the guys on our team, helping the guys on our team through their own mental health struggles. Uh, and so he has, he has turned into a great uh, mentor uh, in this area for, uh, for the athletes um, in, in, in our environment. And, and I think that that, even assuming that role, is, has been one that has helped him uh, navigate and work through some things um, in, his own, uh, in his own mental health journey. Let's see, question for you. Um, as we know here, um, <laughs> as we know uh, here this week, if you were vaccinated, you could not be contact traced. As I understand it, maybe things have changed. Once you go to Tokyo, at least the early indications are that that doesn't matter if you've been vaccinated, you can still be contact traced, which of course is it's, you know, fascinating and scary and all of the above. I'm curious, when you think ahead to Tokyo, maybe the coaches would like to talk about this too, either way. Um, how much are you concerned about something like that? And, and maybe what is your worst fear? Because of course, this is unlike anything that you or any of us have been through before. Thanks. Yeah, sure. Um, I do think that they've modified their, their rules a bit. Um, they now are taking in con to consideration your vaccination status. They don't, aren't automatically going to disqualify you. Um, if you're contact traced at this point in time. So that was definitely good news for us <laughs> to hear. Um, I have a lot of concerns <laughs> going into um, going into this next few weeks. We have to, I mean, the health and safety of our athletes is a, always our number one priority. 
Um, it takes on a whole new meaning this year. Um, we have a pretty strict protocols in place during our training camp. Um, that's why everybody who's been on this pool deck has been asked to um, be safe um, when they're on this pool deck. Um, it's it, this virus is still is still here. It's still out there, and we're going into an environment where we aren't. We have no idea what the other population has been doing to protect themselves, and that makes me nervous. Um, we are going to do a lot to protect ourselves. Um, but I'm nervous about what we're going to walk into. I don't know who's best maybe to address this, but um, obviously we're not going to have uh, family and friends over there in Tokyo. Um, and, you know, you've got some very young team rookies on the team and there's just not going to be that personal look to in the stands or maybe share an embrace or anything. So how do you, how do you handle that? How do you kind of create a sense of family for these kids and, and the older ones as well? I think, I think what Dave and Greg mentioned about how the team comes together, to me, it's an absolutely fascinating process to watch how teams who are competitors um, this week will be, will have lifelong friends after the end, by the time um, August 5th rolls around. And it's, that, that bond is super fascinating. And so we're going to have to re rely on each other a lot more than we would, than we would have to if, if our um, loved ones were able to come to, to Tokyo to watch. And so um, it's, it's going to be, a, it's might even be stronger. The bond might even be stronger because we don't have that, that outlet. Um, and you know, we're, we're, we're lucky that we have a wonderful coaching staff. We have a wonderful group of leaders on our team that we get to, um, to take with us to Tokyo and we will, um, support each other. And, you know, as parents ourselves, we will do everything we can to support these, these athletes, um, both in and out of the water. With the Greg, this is for you with the added events, obviously a little bit more dicey to make the team for some of the people, uh, especially in relay events. I'm just wondering how you approached that, uh, especially with Brooke 40 this week. I mean, she had to wait five long days to uh, to finally be up there today. First of all, what does it mean to you to to have seen her up there and, and make it? And just how are you how did you handle that as a coach, uh, you know, with such a unique but long and drawn out situation? Yeah, th this um, the the added events um, didn't change the roster tremendously. I think there's only one additional athlete. Um, we just had fewer doubles than we've had historically, and um, and so you know just just kind of mapping that out and, and doing it um, for the men's roster as well, knowing that you know we may may butt up against that 26 number, or just kind of patiently watching things unfold. Um, and hoping for the best, obviously to, to pick up everybody, but, um, yeah, it's a, it is difficult for those athletes, uh, even those second place finishers where there wasn't a, you know, two, three days in the meet, you, you kind of assume that's going to happen, but it's still the things need to fall the right way. Um, and so to, to, you know, kind of finish that off tonight, um, getting some help from others and, and, um, having someone like Brooke, uh, on the team, I think makes team USA better. And so we're, we're grateful for that and excited for, for her. Um, but it's a, it's just, it's just, it, Dave alluded to this. This is a, an emotional meet. It's a stressful meet in so many ways. And, um, so at the end of the day, just kind of, all right, take a breath. And no matter how everyone got here, we're here and now we're ready to, to move forward as we move into next week. Yeah, just, I had her keep training, obviously. Um, she needed to, right, if she gets picked up, I don't want her having five days off. <laughs> so, um, you know, she came in, she, she was super diligent, um, did her did her part of the bargain, and just we had conversations. I would fill her in. I didn't want her, you know, just like too much into the weeds on it. But, okay, these are some of the things that will need to happen. And, you know, each day she knew she was getting closer, but there was still a lot of uncertainty. Um, but, yeah, the, the training piece was the most important so that we're not – going home having not, you know, done anything for the last five days.